Next, from the state capitol, we speak with Senator Kwame Raoul, who sponsored the Senate bill to abolish the death penalty. We hear his thoughts on objections to the bill and what he's hearing from the governor's office on whether the bill will be signed into law. This runs about eight minutes. Senator Kwame Raoul, thank you for joining us again on the Illinois Channel. And uh, as we restart this legislative session, uh, one of the major pieces of legislation that had been recently passed in the uh, lame duck session of the legislature was the abolition of the death penalty. And you were the lead sponsor on the bill in the Senate. We wanted to revisit that. At this point, the governor has not signed that bill. Have you had any conversations with the governor? And what are you saying towards encouraging him to sign that bill? Well, yes, I've, I've had a couple of conversations with the governor, and uh, one of the th reasons that he has uh, not acted on it one way or another yet is because the opponents of abolition uh, tried to make the argument over the last couple of months that the public has not had an opportunity to weigh in. And I think the governor is trying to be sensitive to that argument, notwithstanding the fact that we've had a moratorium for 10 years, we've had two commissions, we've had multiple hearings, we've had newspapers editorialized time and time again. Uh, you know, you'd almost have to be under a rock to not know that this debate has been taking place. And I know you, you can't speak for the governor, but <clears throat> when you've had any conversations, has he indicated one way or the other? The, which way he might be leaning on that? Well, the governor has historically stated that he is a proponent of the death penalty, but has recognized the ch challenges that we have had uh, historically in the state of Illinois and, and in the United States at large, but um, to a higher degree in the state of, of Illinois, or at least we've done the work to uncover it. Um, one of the things that I knew as I was sponsoring the bill in the Senate and I was helping uh, the House sponsor, Karen Yarbrough, who did a magnificent job in the House, um, was that many of the people who voted for abolition in both chambers um, did not vote for exactly the same reasons I voted for abolition. So there were some people who uh, were supportive of the death penalty in general, but realized that our track record in the state of Illinois was dismal at best, that we were second only to the state of Florida with the number of innocent men that we uh, know that we have sent uh, to death death row. Um, now, of course, that statistic uh, it can vary based upon how swift justice is in certain states like Texas, and I believe, you know, um, Missouri is uh, about to act on on an execution, and they've done 68 in the time that we've done far, far less. Uh, so, you know, I'm confident that there are states who have acted on executions on innocent men. We will never find find out because the effort to uncover these, uh, the fact that some of these accused may be innocent, um, is less um, active when when an execution has already taken place versus when a life can be saved. You know, since I, I, it, it, some of the news that's been recently out there is we've had several police officers in Chicago killed. We've had the uh, congresswoman in Tucson shot uh, and her assailant killed uh, other people. I mean, there's no even question about his uh, guilt relative, at least to the actions. I mean, maybe he's guilty by other reasons of insanity or something. What, what do you say to those who say, you know, we understand that maybe there's been the problem with sending uh, wrong, you know, wrongfully sending someone to prison, but what about when we have someone dead to rights and there's no question about the fact that a particular individual maybe took the life of someone? Why shouldn't we have the death penalty in those instances? So, you know, there was a suggestion a couple of years ago that we create a no-doubt standard, that the, that 12 jurors would make a determination on a no-doubt st standard. And, and that is the, the case when you know that you know. Uh, I submit to you that, um, first of all, uh, there's no such standard that, that that is perfect. So there are many cases where uh, men have been exonerated, where at the time, all the way to the point where there was a piece of uh, evidence that exonerated uh, the accused, 
in many of those cases, we knew that we knew that we had the right person. There was no question. Um, I, during the debate, I asked people to search back in their memory to when they first heard that Jerry Hobbs in Lake County was arrested for the uh, heinous crime of murdering an eight and nine year old girl. What was their thought? I suggested that they thought that they knew that they knew that Jerry Hobbs committed the crime. We later found out, not because of any reforms we've had in the state of Illinois, but because of a chance arrest in the state of Virginia, uh, that it was not him. I suggested that people think back to when Kevin Fox was first uh, arrested in Will County. Many people that thought that they knew that they knew that uh, law enforcement authorities had the right guy for the heinous crime of killing a three-year-old girl. We later found out that they didn't. So this notion of when you know that you know uh, is, is even in, in there have been historically uh, um, cop killer cases in the, in, the, in the nation where you've gotten the wrong person. So focusing strictly on the nature of the crime is a dangerous thing to do. A lot of people say, well, there are these heinous crimes. Well, it's not just the nature of the crime. It's whether you have the right accused. Would you, uh, sorry to interrupt, but time being short, can we, should we carve out exception for killers of police officers or killers of federal uh, officials, should we make such an exclusion like that to maintain the death penalty or not? I submit no, because you can still arrest the wrong person for the murder of a police officer or a federal, um, um, a federal, uh, a congressman or a state senator or whoever it is. Then the other thing is, what is the message that we're sending? That the life of a congressman is more valuable than the life of a little girl or of y you or I? Um, yes, we want to protect our police officers who are protecting us, but we want to protect all, all, all people as well. And, but the, 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 the critical point is that you can arrest the wrong person for any of these crimes. You can think that you have the right person, but all of the people who are involved in law enforcement are, are you know, I, I, they're, they're honorable people, but they're human beings. They make errors. Um, God did that one of those errors lead us, lead to us as a state, in the name of the people of the state of Illinois, killing the wrong person for a crime that they were accused of. All right, Senator Raul, uh, again, the governor has not yet signed it. We'll see what happens, and uh, we appreciate you joining us again on the Illinois Channel. Thank you. You're watching the Illinois Channel an independent nonprofit corporation formed to provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.